You are watching TFI. Greetings! Welcome back to the channel and another video featuring my low budget, cheap workstation slayer that I'm determined to get my money's worth out of. Uh, the original video that I did on this system is linked up in the YouTube cards, whichever side it does the poppy out card thing from. But just as a recap, or if you didn't see those original videos, my low budget workstation Slayer is a full system build for $650. And in the past, that'll have got you a load of tat that could barely handle anything more than Notepad. But nowadays, you get an absolute monster of a system. So for $650, I've put together a shopping list that includes the Ryzen 3600 6 core CPU on the new Zen 2 architecture, the Radeon RX 580 8 gig variant GPU, 16 gig of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM, alongside PCI Express NVMe based M.2 storage to the tune of 512 gigabytes. That's half a terabyte of M.2 NVMe storage, all for $650. That is unheard of, and the performance is mind bending. So there's two variations of this system. There is one for $650 that includes sort of the low end level of parts you know no rgb doesn't look very pretty but the baseline spec is there and it's intact or there's an 800 dollar variant which will get you the same performance but everything just looks a bit prettier tempered glass case nicer looking ram nicer looking motherboard that kind of stuff so those two shopping lists are in the description down below with my amazon affiliate links so i've had a few people asking the question all right mate i've seen you do 3d cad in it looks pretty capable that's impressive actually for that kind of price i'd take a punt on that but does it do VR? And in the past, $650 for that price, I'd be like, no, sir, you're not getting any VR out of a $650 PC. Not going to happen, mate. But what about now? Well, let's take a look. Great. Here we are inside a virtual reality. Apologies for the audio. I am using the Rift S microphone. It's built into the headset because I don't have the space for shotgun mics hanging over my head and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, to make do with this and uh, the the reason I've gone for the Oculus Rift S headset is that I feel like that's the most appropriate headset to marry up with a PC like this. It's the easiest to set up, it's the most portable and I just feel like for the environment that this PC is going to mostly or chances are it's going to be in, this is the most appropriate headset for that. So, with all that being said, uh, let's take a look at what you can see on screen. There's a little panel at the lower left-hand side corner. Uh, the, the stats that we're most interested with inside of that is the FPS value, which is currently sat at 80. And we, we're we happy with that. I'm not, <laughs> I'd love to like, explain the ins and outs of it all, but we're, we're kind of hoping that that stays at 80 for as long as possible. You are going to see it dip down to 40 now and again. That's fine. But the fewer times it does that, the better. But if it stays at 80, then everything is great. That's the headset and the PC working absolutely perfectly. The other value that we're interested in is the SteamVR SS. So that should be at 100%, but SteamVR has deemed that it's been appropriate to adaptively lower the resolution of the headset down by 2%. I have seen that go down to 82%, actually. It seems to go up and down adaptively based on the environment. And I went with Tilt Brush in the first instance because I want to try a mixture and a variety of different VR applications based on what you might do with this PC. And Tilt Brush is a perfect example on a PC like this. You know, you might be giving it to your kids to try out VR. You might have guests coming over, or you might just want to have a play around with Tilt Brush, but it is kind, it's not really modeling. It's more of an artistic kind of application, but it's a good indication as to how objects and entities can be interacted with inside of VR. So what I'm going to do is pick uh, a random uh, sample environment to jump into so a painting that someone else has already done let's try this one here my reality seems like a bit of a busy scene and there it is okay so it's not the biggest in the world and i appear to be miles away from it so we need to teleport towards it so we'll have to enable teleport lower it down a little bit so inside the vr headset this looks spectacular it looks exactly how it would look on my main rig which has a 2080 ti in there the downgrading of the resolution to 98 percent inside here i can't tell the difference it's not razor sharp but it's absolutely good enough and the fps if it has dipped below 80 which it looked like it went down to 78 there for a, a short second but even if it had dipped down to 40 frames per second as part of the space warping within uh, the oculus runtime i can't tell this looks absolutely perfect if i'm honest it's 
beautiful. Colors are exactly how they should be. The smoothness of the display is exactly how it should be. Uh, I'd say this is a perfect experience. So let's jump inside the artistic elements and start giving, giving it some welly. I'm conscious that I've got some very expensive equipment surrounding me and I don't want to whack it with my hands. This looks absolutely, po this looks perfect. Can't see a single issue with any of this. Let's change the color. Yeah, this is perfect, perfectly smooth. So we are dipping down to 40 there as my head is right inside all of these paint strokes. <laughs> but honestly, inside the headset, the space warping is doing such a good job of adaptively flicking between 80 and 40 frames per second that I'm, I wouldn't notice. I, I would not notice that it is going between 80 and 40 right now. But I say on this system, tilt brush, is an absolute success mate okay so i've jumped into beat saber which is i know it's a game my channel's not really a gaming channel but i just want to test the capability of this pc in running fast-paced virtual reality titles and beat saber is one of the most fast-paced ones out there you've got cubes flying at your face and you're swinging uh, these sabers around and you need the reaction times of the, the pc to be as fast as possible in order to play the game effectively so it's a good test of visual fidelity and also react reaction times i've used beat saber at work as well to test our virtual reality setup not just because i want to play games at work but i want to test how responsive the system is in general so this is another title that we're probably going to see it dip down below 80 frames per second also be, be conscious that i am running this is bad practice but i am running uh, amd's relive uh, screen capture software on this system as well so I am kind of streaming or screen recording and running virtual reality at the same time which does have a huge hit on system performance so yeah it's pretty poor of me to do that I shouldn't be doing that when I'm running a, it's not really a benchmark but a test but bearing that in mind if I am dipping to 40 I am capturing the screen as well at the same time okay so let's uh, I'm this is you know I'm sitting down whilst I'm doing this this isn't great but I'm a living legend. I'm still at 80 frames per second. You can see the frame rate better than I can because I'm looking at cubes flying at me. But this feels absolutely perfect. Again, it's not razor sharp, but without really analyzing it up close, I wouldn't notice the difference whether I'm on this or I'm on my 2080 Ti rig. Can't tell the difference at all. Still, that feels like a, that feels like a crash happened yeah i think beat saber's crashed out so i've experienced this a couple of times with the with the oculus rift s uh, on the amd hardware i think amd's drivers still need some improvement yeah i've just lost steam vr there as well so it's it's not it's not a perfect experience if it was my money i'd probably spend the extra 50 pounds and go for a 1660 or a 1660 ti graphics card instead of having to cope with AMD's abysmal driver support. If you are on a tight budget, uh, then this is probably the best it's going to get. The graphics card clearly is powerful enough to run virtual reality, but there are these teething issues that you're going to possibly experience when you're running with AMD's drivers. So that was Beat Saber. Whilst it was up and running, it was pretty smooth. All right, so I've just fired up Gun Club VR, another game, but it's another test of uh, accuracy response times and visual fidelity. So we're still running at 98% super sampling, so 2% downgrade from what it should be, but can't tell the difference. Running at 80 frames per second, that's fine. If you see me doing this, by the way, you can't see on the screen recording, but there's actually a panel here underneath my controller, which tells me all the stats that you can see uh, that I can't. So let's pick up the gun. Let's just jump into it. A uh, quick Three, firing round. Two, and... one. Yep. This feels as smooth as I need it to be. Once I'm sitting down, I can't see everything that I need to see. Reload. And I can't reach the clip. Yes, I can. Yeah. Fine. So Gun Club feels fine. Still running at 80. Not noticing any issues. Let's create an exp explosion. Reload. Okay. That recoil's a bit overly exaggerated, but... Yeah. Okay, that's enough. So Gun Club, fine. 80 frames per second. So if you want to play games on the Rift S with the RX 580 8-gig variant, it absolutely handles games 
as good as I need it to be anyway. I mean, if you can cope with AMD's driver issues, you're in for a winner with this system for $650. Right, so that's the games out of the way. And now we're in Autodesk Vred, Virtual Reality Editor with some primitive objects, kind of representing, bringing some very basic CAD data from something like SolidWorks, Inventor, Fusion 360, at a very, very simple level. So if you're not working on massive assemblies, you're just working on small part data and you want to bring that into VR and just take a quick look at it, uh, what's that going to be like on this $650 system? And the answer is pretty decent, mate. So we're still super sampling at 98%. Frame rate is at a steady 80. And the GPU frame time is very, very low, as is the CPU frame time. I haven't gone into what that means, but it's, it's a good thing. And yeah, we are... <laughs> as good as we really want it to be mate uh, there's no issues here at all getting up close to the objects we're still at 80 and uh, getting inside of them pretty smooth inside the headset everything's crystal clear it's not all that blurry we don't have any anti-aliasing applied though so let's see what happens when we do that and I think that's taken us down to 40 frames per second it has indeed uh, which is fine it's still absolutely perfectly smooth inside of here uh, but the even though it's it's a little bit it's a little bit blurry still, but this is perfectly usable. Real time anti aliasing at uh, at medium with a couple of basic primitive objects. So what I'll do now is I'm going to load in uh, an automotive scene with a car, and that's a far greater detailed scene. We'll see how that performs. Oh, and here we are inside an automotive scene with a rather gorgeous looking car with wing mirrors that I'm not a fan of if I'm on a store desk but uh, that doesn't detract from the fact that that car is stunning so we're running at 40 frames per second so in a scene like this the RX 580 with the 3600 uh, Ryzen Zen 2 CPU uh, can't make the 80 frames per second required by the Oculus Rift S but space warping down to 40 frames per second around about there this is with anti-aliasing turned off as well this is absolutely perfectly usable so as I'm turning my head fast, I am seeing the, the sides of the the visual starting to clip as I move the, my head from side to side, but that's a pretty unrealistic uh, use case. Aside from that, it's fine. We've got a bit of a dip there. Yeah, we are getting lower than 40. Is that's because I think I'm looking at the headlights, which are quite visually intensive on the GPU to get that. We've got sort of a, a glow on the light with the glare, and that's making this a little bit jerky but as soon as I move away from that it's more than fine so let's interact with a couple of the objects so we've got some touch sensors within the car so as that was opening up it was a little bit distorted as it was opening up but it seems to be perfectly usable if I'm honest mate let's jump inside the car uh, yeah we're dipping below 40 I can feel it starting to judder Whilst it's at 80 and 40, it feels perfectly smooth, but as it deviates lower than 40, you can you can feel it starting to struggle a little bit. It's not making me nauseous. Fortunately, I don't suffer from any kind of uh, nausea or motion sickness inside VR, but I think some people may, may feel a little bit as it starts to jitter around. But if you're going to be using a scene like this, you're probably not going to want to pick a $650 workstation to run it on. But this is sort of... Not, not, not really worst case scenario, but it is quite an intensive uh, 3D CAD scene. It's usable. It's not what I would voluntarily go out and buy to run this on, but it is usable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the lights off and all the camera effects just to see if that makes a bit of a difference. Okay, so I've been into the settings and I've turned off the, the lights that represent the, the tail lights and the headlights because uh, there's some lens flare on those. And yeah, we are now over 40 frames per second. We're not quite hitting 80, but I can tell already it's made a huge difference let's go around to the front of the car yeah this, uh, yeah see we're now almost hitting 80 uh, at the front of the car let's come out to the side let's move away a little bit and turn around from a distance uh, yeah so it, it's quite up and down it's inconsistent but with those lights turned off it's made a hell of a difference so if you do want to go for this system and you are going to run these VR CAD scenes, then it's absolutely possible to do that. Just make sure you don't have too many entities within the scene that are too intensive for the system, like lights. Uh, you can just use the natural lighting from the HDRI background to light this scene and turn off any extra additional lights that you might have created. So yeah, that's much better. It's much better. It did dip a little bit, but it's much better. Right. So what I'm going to do now is turn on anti-aliasing to see if we can 
sharpen up those edges. Right, so this is with real-time anti-aliasing set to medium, and it's it's absolutely killing it. <laughs> I'm honest, this is not this isn't usable uh, the way it is now. So I'm gonna shut, see if I can shut this door. I have to move up and just touch it and close that. Yeah, it's so jerky. It's failing to register the touch sensor. No, there we go. There we got it there. I mean, it's working, but I wouldn't put this in front of anyone that I work with or a customer or a client. This is far too jerky. So I think we've, we've hit the limit of what this PC is capable of, but this is already more than what I expected this system to be capable of. In a nutshell, if you want to run VR on this, yes, you absolutely can. You just can't run it at the upper limit of what the, the high-end software applications are going to require. But to be fair, if you were to ask me what kind of PC you'd need to run a scene like this on, if you would ask Autodesk, they'd be telling you to pick dual quadros, RTX 6000s, to run a scene like this absolutely perfectly. So a $650 system, this is punching way above its weight, but it's, uh, it's it works, it's just not the best. And there you go, mate. Yes, indeed, this is what happens when you run VR on an absolutely sweltering hot day. <laughs> gonna do, it's worth it. But in conclusion, can the $650 cheap workstation Slayer run VR? Yes, mate, like an absolute boss. I mean, it's not something that I would recommend that you go out and get explicitly and exclusively for VR. If that's something that you plan on doing on a regular basis and you need to build a system for VR, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're planning on buying it and you might do some VR in the future and you want to make sure it's capable, yes, absolutely. It ran the games like an absolute champ. And in terms of the CAD scene, Basic primitive objects, fine. High-end automotive scenes, anything with a lot of detail in there, a lot of polygons, a lot of nodes, a lot of triangles, it's gonna struggle. So if you wanna buy a system like this, mate, all of the links are in the description. They're all my Amazon affiliate codes, uh, UK and US codes uh, for the $650 version and the $800 version. The one I've got is the $800 version with all the, the better grade of components, prettier components. But if you went for the $650 version, you'll get the exact same performance because it's the same spec, just with stuff that doesn't look as good. Anyway, that's all I've got. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. And if you do buy this, enjoy. And let me know in the comments if you are thinking about doing it or if you have done it already. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.